Hi guys, welcome to this revision session of Boat and Streams. Boat and Streams actually is a concept which is related with time, distance and speed and all the laws which apply, all the formulas which apply to time, distance and speed also apply to boats and streams. So it is just an application of time, distance and speed. If you guys have understood time, distance and speed, then you can directly go to this video of boats and streams. Though the difficulty level is a bit advanced, but nevertheless, if you know time, distance and speed, then you can easily solve boat and streams problem. So there are going to be five problems related with boats and streams and we are going to solve each problem within 90 seconds or 1.5 minutes. So let us begin with boat and streams but before that let us revise the concepts which are related with boat and streams. If at all the speed of my boat is given by B, this is the speed of my boat in still water. If the speed of the stream is given by S or the speed of the uh, river, river flow is given by S, then I have my upstream which is against the stream. So upstream means your boat is going in one direction and the stream is going in another direction. So what will happen in this case? Obviously the speed is going to decrease. So that is called as upstream and upstream speed is given by B minus S. So boat and streams basically deals with the relative speed concept and in case of upstream where two parties are going in the opposite direction unlike in trains wherein we were adding the speed but in this case this we have to decrease the speed because the boat is going to be slower when the direction of the river is against it because that is going to create some resistance to the boat's motion. So we have the upstream speed which is given by B minus S. Now what is the downstream speed? So the downstream speed is when the speed of the boat and that of the stream is in the same direction. So the boat is also going in the direction of the water flow. So now the boat has no resistance. In fact, opposite, it is now going in a more speed because of the flow of the river. So now we have B plus S which is my downstream speed. So now I have to add the two speeds because my speed of the boat is going to increase. So now let us find out what is the speed of the boat in still water if I know the upstream speed and the downstream speed. So please memorize this particular formula and I'm not going to derive it for you. I have already derived it in one of the videos of mine. So please by heart this formula. So the speed of the boat in still water is given by 1 upon 2 times the downstream speed and the upstream speed, the sum of the downstream speed and the upstream speed. Whereas the speed of the stream is given by half into the difference between the downstream speed and the upstream speed. So I have these two formulas for the speed of my boat and the speed of the stream and I have these two formulas which is upstream and downstream. So with this knowledge I can solve any question which is related with boat and streams. So let us go to the first problem. A man rose to a place 35 kilometers in distance and back in 10 hours 30 minutes. He found that he can row 5 kilometers with the stream in the same time as he can row 4 kilometers against the stream. Find the rate of flow of the stream. So here you have to find out the stream, the speed of the stream which is S. You are given what is the downstream speed and what is against stream or upstream speed. So you have given it in a ratio basis that you have to find out what is the what is the speed of the stream. So guys your time starts now.
that now. No. Okay guys, your 90 seconds time has ended and let us solve this question. For all those who could solve it, congratulations, this was a very easy one. But nevertheless, if at all you have got the answer wrong, please have a look at the solution. So here we are given the distance. Here the distance value of D is 35 kilometers. And I am given the total time, which is capital T. It is 10 hours, 30 minutes, which means it is 10.5 hours. So I am given this information. Now, my capital T, which is the total time taken, is going to be some of the time taken in order to go from point A to B. The distance between AB is given as 35 kilometers and the total time taken is going to be time taken for that man to row from A to B and plus the time taken to row from B to A. So he is going in this direction once and he is going from B to A once. So it is the sum of time taken to row from A to B and B to A. Correct? So this is one formula that I have got. Now the formula for my speed is nothing but distance upon time. So I have to calculate time. So my time is nothing but distance upon speed. Have I given any information about the speed? Yes. One time it is going to be downstream and the other time it is going to be upstream. I have been given that this man is taking same time to row 5 kilometers downstream and 4 kilometers upstream. So now I know that the ratio of my speeds is going to be 5 is to 4. Ratio of my downstream to upstream is going to be 5 is to 4 because speed is directly proportional to distance. So can I say my downstream speed is 5x and my upstream speed is 4x? Once I say this, the total time taken is 10.5 which is equal to T to TAB which is the time taken for him to go from A to B which is the time taken for him to go downstream which is nothing but distance which is 35 upon the speed. So my downstream speed is 5x plus 35 upon my upstream speed which is 4x. So I get the value of my x as 0 0.75 kilometers per hour. When you solve it, you get this particular value. So the correct answer here is 0 0.75 kilometers per hour. So this was one of the easy questions guys. Let us go to the next one. P, Q and R are three cities located at the bank of a river which flows at the same rate. Q is situated equal distance from P and R. So I have three cities here. I have P. Then I have Q. And I have R. So the distance between P, Q and Q, R is same. Harindra Singh starts from P and goes to Q and comes back to P and it takes 10 hours. So he is going once in this direction and he is coming back again and the total time taken is 10 hours. So the total time is going to be P, P, Q plus P. He covers the distance from P to R. This has to be R. R in 4 hours. So he is covering this particular distance in 4 hours. 
if the speed of the stream is 9 kilometers per hour then find the speed of harendra singh in still water so we are given the speed of stream as 9 kilometers per hour so guys your time starts now Okay guys, the 90, min 90 seconds time has ended and now let us solve this particular problem. So here we are given that P to R, this guy is completing in 4 hours. So this journey from P to Q is going to take 2 hours. What does that mean? Q to P is going to take how many hours? If at all P to Q is 2 hours, then Q to P is going to take 8 hours, correct? So can I say that downstream he is taking 2 hours and upstream he is taking 8 hours. So can I say downstream is taking 2 hours and upstream he is taking 8 hours. What does this mean? So I have speed equal to distance upon time. So speed is inversely proportional to time. Which means that my downstream speed is going to be 8x and my upstream speed is going to be 2x. So I can put up this value, my downstream speed, which is actually 4x and 1x, if I simplify this. So, my downstream speed comes as 4x. So, I can write my downstream speed as 4x. This is nothing but speed of the boat plus speed of the stream. What is the speed of the stream? It is 9. And I get the second equation as 2x, which is my downstream speed. It is nothing but speed of my boat minus 9. Sorry, this has to be x. Yeah. So, when I solve this equation, I get the value of b and the value of my b is nothing but 15 kilometers per hour. So, the value of, so the speed of Harendra Singh is 15 kilometers per hour. Now, let us see the next question, guys. A boat takes 55 5 is to 9 percent more time upstream than that of downstream to cover a certain distance. While difference between upstream and downstream, downstream speed is 10 kilometers per hour, speed of the boat in still water is what? So guys, this is again an easy one and this question relates with the concept that speed is inversely proportional to time. So here I am given the upstream speed and the downstream speed. I have actually been given it in a different indirect way by stating the time which the boat takes to go upstream and downstream. So from this I get the ratio of upstream to downstream and all you have to find out is what is the speed of the boat in still water. So guys your time starts now.
Okay guys, now the 90 seconds time has ended and here we are given information about the time taken to move upstream and downstream. So can I say that if at all my upstream speed is x, then my down speed, downstream speed is going to be 1 plus 55 5 upon 9 is by the way 500 upon 9. So 500 upon 9 into 100 times of x. I can say that right because my speed is inversely proportional to time. So here I have this comes out as 14x upon 9 and the upstream speed is x. So my downstream speed I know and my upstream speed I know. Also I know my downstream minus upstream speed is 10 kilometers. So when I put this in in this particular equation, I have 14 upon 9x minus x and that comes out to be 10. So when I solve this, I get 14 minus 9 which is 5x upon 9 equal to 10. So this gives the value of x as 18. Now I know the speed, the downstream speed and the upstream speed. So when I substitute here, I get the downstream speed as 28 and the upstream speed as 18. I want to find out what is the value of B. So I know the formula that the value of B or the value of a speed of boat in still water is half into downstream plus upstream. So half into 18 plus 28 comes out as 9 plus 14 which comes out as 23. So the correct answer here is 23 kilometers per hour. This one again was an easy question. Let's go to the next question. A ship is 77 kilometers away from the shore. There is a hole in the ship from where 2 1 is to 4 tons of water comes out every 5 and a half minute. There is another outlet which throws 12 tons of water every hour. It takes 69 ton of water to sink the ship. Find the required speed of this ship so that the ship catches up with the rescue ship which is coming towards it at 6 kilometers per hour. So guys, this is again an easy one here. In this particular question, all you have to do is, you have to find out what is the uh, accumulation, what is the water accumulation per hour. So, the water accumulation per hour is going to be 1.5 is going to be whatever is the input, which is uh, 5 upon 4 tons. But this is coming every 5 one, five and a half minute which is nothing but 11 upon 2 minutes so I have the input which is 5 upon 4 into 11 into 2 into 60 because it is given in minute minus 12 <laughs> so once I get this what is the water accumulation per hour I know it is taking 69 tons of water to sink the ship. So all I need to do is find the time that is required to accumulate 69 tons of water. So whatever I get here, I have to divide it by, I have to divide 69 by that number and I will get time. And then I can find out the speed of the ship. So guys, your time starts now.
Okay guys, so the time has ended, 90 seconds time has ended and I had almost solved this problem for you. But if at all you haven't understood, pay attention here to the solution. Now, it is given that the water is, there is a hole and the water is coming in the ship and it is coming at the speed of 5 is to 4 tons per, per 5 and a half minute. That is per 11 upon 2 minutes. So what is the water that is going to come inside the hole in one hour? So that particular thing is given by this particular form, this number. 5 upon 4 into 2 upon 11 into 60. So that is the amount of water in tons that is coming inside the ship. Also there is another outlet which is throwing 12 tons. So 12 tons per hour. So I have to subtract 12 and I will find out what is the accumulated water. So accumulated water per hour comes out as 138 upon 11. I have written down the calculations in my notebook. So it comes out as 138 upon 11. Now it is given that when there is 69 ton of water, the ship is going to sink. So I have to find out after how many hours the ship is going to sink. Because the water accumulation is 138 upon 11 tons per hour. So I have to divide 69 by 138 upon 11. And I get the time as 5.5 hours. So this is the amount of time that is required. That is there for this particular ship to sink. After 5.5 hours the ship is going to sink. But till that particular time. There is another rescue ship that is coming at 6 kilometers per hour. So in 5.5 hours, how much of the distance will be covered by this, this particular rescue ship? So in 5.5 hours, the rescue ship is going to cover 33 kilometers. Now the ship is already 77 kilometers from the shore. So it is, if I depict this, it is 77 kilometers from the shore. And there is already a rescue ship that is 33 kilometers at 5.5 hours. So this particular ship of ours, it just have to travel 44 kilometers in 5.5 hours, correct? So it has to travel 44 kilometers in 5.5 hours in order to avoid sinking. So this comes out as, so this comes out as 4 upon point 0.5. So that is nothing but 40 upon 5 and the answer comes out as 8. So the ship has to travel at the speed of 8 kilometers per hour to save itself from sinking. So this was again a very simple problem. If at all you understand the concept then it becomes easier for you to tackle these kind of problems. Okay guys, now let us see the fifth question. Poonam was going in a boat. Suddenly her cap fell in the water and started moving away from her backward with the stream. So here we have Poonam and she is moving in the water and suddenly her cap, her cap has fallen down and the cap has started moving towards this direction. So this is where the cap has fallen. The boat kept on moving 12 more minutes against the stream. When Poonam realized that her cap fell in water, she took U-turn and row with the stream to catch her cap. So she has again gone into this direction. The point where she caught her cap was the point where she started. So this point P is the point where she has got her cap. So this is the point where Poonam and the cap are meeting. If her cap fell 3 kilometers away from the starting point, find the speed of the stream. So we have to find the speed of the tree stream. Let this particular point be B. This question is more of a geometry question than of uh, time, distance and speed or maybe boats and streams. So guys, your time to solve this question starts now.
Okay guys, your time has ended and let us see how this particular problem can be solved. Like I said, this is more of a geometry problem than of time, distance and speed or both and stream. So, can I write PC plus CB is equal to PB? So, this is my first equation and this is a very important equation. Once I know this equation, my whole problem is solved. So, my PB, my P, my PB is nothing but my PC plus my CB. So, my this particular length plus CB length. Okay. Now, what is the speed by which the cap is traveling to point P? The cap fell at point C and it is traveling at point B, P. So, the speed is going to be S which is the speed of the stream, right? Let the speed of the stream be S and let the speed of Poonam be B because Poonam is traveling by a boat. So, boat speed is going to be B. Now, the cap has come from point C to point P in what time? So, it has come to this particular particular place P in 12 minutes plus the time taken by Poonam to move from B to P. Let us assume that in order to move from B to P, the time taken to move from B to P is T. So now the cap has come to point P in 12 plus T minutes, correct? So, can I write down my PC is nothing but I know speed is equal to distance upon time. So, my distance is going to be speed into time. The total time that the cap has taken is 12 minutes plus time T into the speed of the stream. Now, I have got my PC. What is my CB? So, this is my CB. CB the time taken is 12 minutes and the speed is going to be the speed of the boat to travel from C to B is going to be upstream. So, it is the speed of my boat minus the speed of my stream. And what is the value of PB? So, PB is nothing but downstream because Poonam is moving downstream from B to P. So, the time taken is going to be T which we have already assumed into the, down, the downstream speed which is B plus S. So, when I substitute all these values into my equation, I get the value of T and the value of T comes out to be 12 minutes. So, all I do is I substitute this into this particular this, this particular equation and the value of my t comes out as 12 minutes. Now, I already know that pc is 3 kilometers. So, I already know that. Now, I have from this particular point, I have 12 plus t into s is equal to 3. I already know the value of my t has come out as 12. So, 24s is equal to 3. So, s is nothing but 3 upon 24. So, this comes out as 8 and this is 1. So, the value of 8 of s is 1, 1 upon 8 kilometers per minute. But let us find out the value in hours kilometers per hour. So, the value of my speed comes out as 1 upon 8 into 60 which is nothing but 7.5 kilometers per hour. So, the value of the speed value of the speed of the stream comes out as 7.5 kilometers per hour. I hope you have understood this problem. In this problem, we had to draw, draw the diagram. We know that PC plus CB is equal to PB we have used the formula of speed, distance equal to speed into time. We have assumed one time to be t, which is the total down, downstream time 
that uh, punam takes to reach from b to p and then we have just put the values in our equation pc plus pb equal to pb and we have calculated the time same thing with p we have substituted in the value which is given us 3 kilometers which is pc's value we substituted and we got the value of s but the value of s was in kilometers per minute so we have converted that into kilometers per hour and we have found out the final answer to be 7.5 kilometers per hour i hope you guys have understood today's session all the five problems and these were very easy ones if at all you know the concept related with time distance and speed and relative speed concept so guys with this particular question i am ending this video stay tuned for more such revision videos thank you